It's the Witcher reaction time! Ah, uh, yeah! Now that we've finished the series on Netflix, I wanted to go back and watch the opening cinematic from Witcher 3 because I think it actually gives a really good quick synopsis of what he's all about. And I have to say, it's probably the best, although it could be second best, depending if you also like the Witcher 2 opening cinematic. It's honestly one of the best cinematics out there. Mm. It does such a great job of capturing the drama, him as a monster fighter, the dangers he put himself through. And it's oh, amazing, amazing good stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. I actually think this whole cinematic, it had they recreated it into the TV show, would have been the killer episode. Really? Yeah. Why can't they put this one? Mm, I don't know. Netflix, you could have absolutely taken it from this one. I mean, honestly, the setup for this is just so, so amazing. And the All right. Oh, so okay. good. Just, just, let's watch it. Okay. And away we go. Mature. For sure. Not for kitties. Asleep in midst the trees, but all a swaying in the breeze. But one soul lies anxious, wide awake, fearing no all manner of ghouls, hags, and wraiths. Nice tune. Been a while since I heard it last. What is this? Folk have forgotten it. Got other things on their mind. Things like me. They paid me for you. <laughs> mm. In times past, oh boy. no amount of coin would convince a witcher to take this contract. Times have changed. Well, hello. That was oh. a... A lot hey. more revealing than I remember. A little bit of a nip slip. <laughs> He's all about the potions, baby. It's a different pendant. Let's see. Got a pretty lean body there. Oh, the potion. Feel sorry for her too. It's all silent all the night. Cows turned in as daylight dies. But when so lies anxious wide awake, for the witcher. Coin. 
he'll chop one slice yeah. you cut and dice you eat you up whole. God, I forgot how good the music Me was in this game. So haunting. Damn! You are indeed right. Very, very um emotional. Like the music into this one, the picture. Beautiful. That's the whole game though. I mean, this is cinematic, so it absolutely <laughs> looks a heck of a lot better right. than the actual game. But everything about it was just very mature. It was unrelenting. It was gruesome. It made you always feel conflicted. Like even though you were the monster hunter, you were always thought of as someone who looked like a monster and did very gruesome things as well. And even after you kill them, sometimes you question like, oh my God, what did I do type of thing. Mm -hmm. It's encapsulated so well Well, here. that's what Witcher is, right? He's always questioned at first, like, I'm not a killer. I don't kill. He's a like, killer. Human or whatever. Well, he made a decision. And He's a monster killer. He tries end. not to yes, kill humans. Monster. Although, ironically enough, I'd say if you play the game, you definitely kill a hell of a lot more humans than monsters. <laughs> But he, even in the TV show, he you know he just kills. But I think what's great about the series and why it translates so well into from the books to the games to even the TV show is that killing felt like there was gravitas to it. It was not just kill, 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 and yes. you kind of move on. You felt the weight of what the action was, mm -hmm. and it played out so amazingly uh, well here. I can't believe this game's been out for a good number of years, and actually, since the TV show came out, the game has shot back up to the charts on Steam again, like people going back really? to replay it again, yeah. Because wow. it's, it's such a good game, though. There's so much story told in this, that you could play through it five, six, seven times, and each time could have a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. It depends on your decision. Yeah, it depends on decision your decision. Decision making, yeah. you know, where, which way you want to go, the wrong way or the right way. Mm -hmm. well, not, oftentimes, right it's not way? even a right way or a <laughs> wrong way. It's just one way or the other. Like, for instance, in the game, you can have the choice of um, never actually falling in love with Yennefer. You can actually decide that, no, you would rather hook up with Triss, the other sorceress, instead. And oh, just, really? Yeah, just totally different outcome. Now, this is all from the game, which they say is not part of canon. Like, it's not actually what happened in the books. It's after the books. Mm -hmm. So they can take some more liberties to tell branching stories of things that are possible. But I ended up picking, you know, going with Yennefer. You look dashing. Thank you. You're dazzling. And uh, I didn't pick Why? the best series ever. Because Yennefer? Yennefer is hot. <laughs> what? That's Yen, charming as ever. I guess He's I like have brunette. a thing more for the <laughs> raven hair girls than the redhead. <laughs> now, you know, I think it was just a character. There's something about Yennefer that felt conflicted. A lot like Geralt was. And I felt like they were just they a were, better They just connected. understand each other. They just, yeah, something about like two lost There's souls connection. coming together. A great deal has changed. You haven't. Not a bit. I missed those awkward compliments of yours. Which I'm glad I did because their storyline is actually a heck of a lot more interesting. Oh. They actually talk about the Jinn here as well. And they eventually did break the curse. The Jinn. That's why we can't escape each other. Why I feel this way inside. It's not because of anything real or true. You made a wish. It's magic. It's real, Yen. How could we ever know? In the game to find out, like, well, what happens if you break the curse? Would they still be in love? Or is the love they feel simply because he wished it? Mm. So it's very, very interesting that... And did they? Know, did they? They did do it in, in the game. Love, even if... <laughs> and, I'll, and on that note, I will not tell you. Aw, tell me that. Oh, so that was his wish. Well, his wish wasn't specifically, I want to fall in love. It never was entirely spelled out, but it was something to the fact that he will always be bound to her. Mm -hmm. Right, and because the Jin can't kill his master, because Geralt will then always be bound to her, the Jin will never kill her either. So that was his way of trying to protect her. But that's why, mm -hmm. no matter how they are separated, they somehow this. like rubber bands and magnets just pulled back together again, type of thing. Right. Which you get a hint of in the TV show. Every additional episode, they kind of hint at they go on their separate ways and they come back. 
I do wish they showed more of that. They could have easily spent another episode or two of separate adventures coming back, separate adventures coming back, just to really hammer home that they can't get separated. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's a really powerful piece of the story, actually. I really felt like that was one of the most interesting parts of the entire Witcher series. Not the political turmoil, not you know him trying to save Ciri. It's that relationship dynamic between him and Yennefer. Interesting story. 